Okay, the math professor is on the air once more. Okay, so we have been um, uh, we have been uh, uh, working with Excel. So open, uh, oh, wait, I'm lying. I've got to get the guys on uh, Zoom going. Good on her. Okay, well, sorry to, uh, for the uh, late start. I was having trouble making the technology set up and, uh, uh, and beg. Metaphorically speaking, of course. Uh, so... Save any of my work from yesterday. Yes, that's the one. All right. Now that I've saved my uh, work from yesterday, I can share the screen. All right, and of course, I blow it up to ridiculously sized proportions so you can see it. Um, all right, now, as we all know, the first thing we do is we save the file. So I want to save in computer skills. This is going to be quiz number 
five, um, and uh, this is going to be about goals. All right. So as usual, we create our header with our uh, name, our class ENGR123, our quiz number five, and the date. Uh, what is this, 9-9? Nine, nine? I hope. <laughs> oh, I don't know about you guys, but I had a rough weekend. And if only it had been because I was drinking. <laughs> um, all right. Now, uh, in life, uh, we want to... Uh, uh, we want to do well. We all have goals and dreams, but sometimes they're kind of poorly formed and inchoate, right? What we want to do is create a mechanism to make those goals easier to understand and to achieve. How do we do that? Well, we create SMART goals. Okay, so what are SMART goals? Well, first of all, they're specific, right? We don't say, well, I sure hope something good happens to me sometime. No, we think about what is uh, what is a goal I want, uh, right? Um, we don't think just, oh, I want to get a vehicle. We think, well, what kind of vehicle do I want? Do I want uh, a Honda? Do I want a Toyota? Do I want a, a passenger sedan? Do I want a truck? Right? So, we want to be specific about our goals. Um, we want to make sure our goals are measurable. Uh, right? So we have some way of saying, yes, I've achieved that goal properly, or no, I fell short. Right? So, uh, so we think about uh, how much do I want to spend to, to get a vehicle? How old should that vehicle be? Do I, uh, do I want something really old? I actually want kind of an antique car uh, or truck. Do I want something that's pretty new but still affordable? Exactly what am I thinking about? Right? We want it to be attainable. Uh, something that uh, uh, is going to be a possible to attain goal, uh, right? Um, I'm going to flap my arms and fly to the moon. Well, that's not an attainable goal. Uh, so far, arm flapping has not flown anyone to the moon. Uh, uh, right? So 
Uh, and when uh, talking about the goal of getting a vehicle, uh, I know that uh, when I first started thinking about getting a vehicle, I was saying to myself, oh, I'm going to get a Rolls Royce. Well, bloody hell. I was a kid. I had no money. Uh, uh, you know, unless a Rolls Royce fell out of the sky on me, that just wasn't going to happen. Right? So, uh, now, I could have made that an attainable goal if I'd been willing to say, you know what? All right, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to work every day. I'm going to save all my money until I can get a Rolls Royce. And as it happened, it wasn't that long before somebody advertised a Rolls I uh, Thank you for that comment. Uh, uh, okay, you might want to, uh, 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 to mute yourself. We're getting feedback here, unless you have some comment that you would like to contribute. Um, oh, right, I'm in. Um, right, now it happened that uh, not that long after I had set a goal of getting a Rolls Royce, somebody advertised a Rolls Royce in the ad sack, uh, the local little throwaway paper that has all the ads, uh, classified ads in it. Uh, so I called the guy up and he's like, yeah, $10,000 and you could take this baby away. Well, this was the 1970s. $10,000 was a lot of money. Well, it still is for that matter. Uh, uh, so, so that brings us to our next point, which is our goals have got to be realistic. Um, if I had been willing to buckle down and work like a dog, that might have been a realistic uh, goal at the time. But at the time, I was busy being a college student uh, who didn't have a whole lot going on. Uh, so, uh, so that wasn't really a realistic goal. And, oh, and it's got to be timely. Timely means that um, we don't set a goal and we say, someday I'm going to do this. We think in terms of when can I do this, right? Now, I am going to work with you here in a minute to create goals um, uh, uh, to create goals for your life. Um, uh, and, uh, and I want you to be thinking about goals uh, in terms of uh, being like Uh, six-month goals um, so um, these are things uh, that can happen soon right so it can be less than six months right you might have a goal that uh, would be uh, a month or even uh, uh, a couple of weeks, right? Um, uh, for example, a goal that uh, uh, that I have is that 
at Thanksgiving, I'm going to go to California to visit my nephew, uh, taking my sister with me out there, and we are going to uh, have Thanksgiving with him, grab the rest of her stuff, and bring it back to, uh, to Crown Point. All right, so that is uh, uh, what you might think of as a, uh, a six-month goal, right? Then we might have a, uh, a one-year goal. Uh, uh, things that might take uh, a little longer. Um, and uh, then usually we think in terms of five years goals um, so those are things that have to wait on other conditions, right? Now, for example, y'all might be thinking in terms of, okay, I want to finish school and I want to get a good job. Uh, I hope you're thinking in those terms. Uh, all right, I have at least one nod. Um, but, uh, so, uh, so some things are dependent on getting uh, other things done, right? You can't get as a job as an engineer or a technician if you don't finish your, uh, uh, your schooling. Now, you can, well, actually, I, I'm wrong when I say that. You can get a job as an engineer or a technician without finishing your schooling, but you're going to be stuck perpetually kind of at the bottom of, uh, uh, of the uh, heap uh, because people that have degrees will get promoted above you and um, it just ends up being uh, oh, well, we'd like to promote you, or we'd like to give you that raise, but you don't have the qualifications. Um, okay. Um, ten years goals are things that um, uh, need more development and conditions to be met. All right. So I'm going to put Goal length and oh, I'm just going to leave it at that. All right, so goals, uh, uh, as I say, they're going to come in various time periods that we have to think. Right? So your five-year goal may be, I want to graduate, I want to get a good job. Right? Your 10-year goal might be, I want to be the manager, I want to have a house, a family.
uh, right? So there can be all kinds of uh, uh, all kinds of um, uh, different uh, ways of thinking in terms of time period. Uh, for example, for you guys, getting a house might be a 10-year goal, right? For me, it's like uh, uh, kind of in my six-month goal uh, area. Uh, so, creating uh, a set of goals, first of all, I'm going to have a category. Is this a personal goal? Is this a, a family goal? Is it a professional goal? Exactly uh, uh, what is it? Then, what is the goal? Uh, and then, I'm going to put um, the time. All right, so, all right, now one thing I want you to do, so I want you to go up here and click on file, click on print, and then click on this arrow to go backwards. That tells me where the edge of the paper is. One thing I don't uh, ever want to forget is formatting. Right? When I get a file and everything prints out except the last little edge is on the next page, that is very irritating. Uh, all right. So, in my category, um, I'm going to put family. My goal is um, uh, a house, and then the time period, I'm going to put a 0 0.5. Okay, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to denominate my time period in years. All right, so in six months I want to have a house, so I put down zero, 0 0.5. Uh, all right. Now, if that is one of your goals, put that down, but what is your time period to achieve that? It may not be six months. It may be five years, or it may be ten years, or, um, or for right now, it may be, I just want to have my own apartment. All right, so what is another, uh, uh, another goal that you might have? Anyone at all? Graduate. Graduate. All right, so is that a, uh, a personal or professional goal? I'm going to put it down as professional, um, uh, but that's a, a very good one. Uh, a lot of people are thinking of their goal in terms of surviving this semester, <laughs> uh, right? But the further ahead you can see, the more successful you're going to be in, uh, in your life. All right, so graduate, and uh, what is the time period for that? Well, all right, three years, I'm putting that down. 
Uh, uh, so, uh, right, and you can put anything down. Uh, for example, I might put down personal get a girlfriend hard to believe for the people that are here who are looking at me steadily and looking at me whole and saying oh my god he's old and ugly right and I'm going to put that time period down as one year Okay, well, what might be another, uh, another goal? Um, I'm going to put down a professional goal, and that is uh, to be the dean, and I'm going to put five years on that. Right? So, so, what are some other goals you guys have? I mean, don't make me be sitting up here by myself, uh, 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 stripping bare the threads of my life uh, for you. Um, uh, throw some stuff out there. Um, uh, Victoria, what is a goal in your life? I have short term, long term, and really long terms. That, that is a, a perfectly fine way of doing it, but I would put actual times. Well, my first one is um, study for the midterm exams, which is coming up. Study for the midterm exam. Now, of course, for this class, the midterm is a particularly easy situation, but that's not going to be the case for every class. You may have classes that are a lot more involved, uh, and um, uh, and are good. Now, what category did you put that in? I just put school. School is a perfectly good category. Yeah. I also have competitions and conferences. I'm going to where I separate those with competition and, and conferences, or. You, uh, you could put those in the school category. You could put them in a competition okay. category. Um, look, you can have as many categories as you, as you would like. Uh, uh, the categories are more because I want to have kind of a uh, double sort. Ah, uh, okay. I see where you're coming. Um, uh, Right, because ordinarily I wouldn't necessarily sever, separate my goals in categories. It kind of depends on, on how I'm feeling. Um, so, uh, a, a family goal that I have is clean the house. My sister, on Monday, Monday, no, Sunday, we went to get Chinese food. My sister tripped over the ramp at the restaurant and broke her arm. And I ended up having to take her to the emergency room. Uh, so now, all the house cleaning is on me. Before, we had kind of split everything up. Uh, you know, you do the dishes, I'll clean the cat boxes kind of thing. Um, now, it's all on me. So, cleaning the house. And um, let's, uh, I'm going to say, equals 1 divided by 26, or 2 weeks. Uh, uh, for that goal. Um, um, uh, so, um, Mr. Donahue, what is uh, what is a goal that you're thinking of? Um, getting my pre-engineering certificate. 
getting his pre-engineering certificate. Okay, and what's the time frame for that? Uh, one year. One year. Okay, now, assuming that you're taking all the classes you need to for that, that is a very attainable goal. Um, one thing that I see with some of my <coughs> students is they want to graduate in, uh, in the one year or the two year or the four year, but they don't take all the classes they need to when they need to take them. All right, so that's, that's a good goal. Um, uh, Adrian, what about you? What's a goal you're putting down? Um, apply for an internship. Applying for an internship. I have not even had a chance to start raving to you guys about the importance of uh, internships. Uh, and I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, look, an internship is like a 10-week job interview. Every summer you should be working on getting, you should be working to get a summer internship, right? Because that gives you a chance to show somebody uh, your abilities and, um, uh, and uh, gives them the chance to see, do we really want to employ this person or not? Right? So getting an internship is an extremely uh, smart idea uh, every summer. Uh, uh, because look, eventually the goal of going to school here has to be being employed. Uh, uh, in my life, I have known some professional students. In fact, some have accused me of being a professional student. Um, in a way, that's a, a, a kind of a cushy lifestyle, but it's not very, uh, there's not a lot of money involved there. Having a job in a technical field, there's money involved with that. And uh, and you know the old saying, cash makes no enemies. Maybe you don't know that saying. Maybe you're not familiar with the, uh, uh, with the philosophy of uh, Felton Hall. Uh, uh, Felton Hall was a friend of mine uh, who was full of these little pithy sayings. Um, all right. Uh, so what is um, uh, another, uh, another goal we could put down? Um, I'm, um, I'm trying desperately to think of the name of our last companero hiding in the back there. No. Um, Brendan. Uh, Brendan, how could I have forgotten that? Brendan, what is the goal that you're putting down? Um, let's say, um, working in Quanto. I'm sorry, working in Quanto? Quanto. Uh, hey, uh, my family owns a Quanto. Um, I've been and, doing it ever since I was young. Right. So uh, my grandpa, he's hitting 85, and he can no longer do it. And uh, so I'm trying to take over the mantle, I guess, because uh, basically I might take time away from school sometimes just to be able to work the corn. Um, right. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's very desirable. You want to help out your family. Um, uh, and now, are you just going to get corn out of that, or you guys make a corn maze, or...? Um, no, we, uh, we make uh, kneel-down bread, a wheat 
plant blue corn, then uh, red corn, and then uh, we plant white corn mostly. Um, white corn we usually uh, distribute as uh, seed corn. So we, right. have, uh, we have a big old uh, cooker, uh, like an oven. Uh, right. So we, it's a very hard process. They, uh, when, when we go selling sometimes, they have no idea the hard work that goes into uh, harvesting and uh, planting corn and maintaining it. Um, sometimes I usually, usually throughout the whole process, I get up like at 5 or 4 o'clock in the morning, mostly every day. Go to the cornfield, um, get the tractor, uh, go to the windmill, get water, and then water each one. Because we we plant about forty rows each, right? And it's basically seven acres. But we're not supposed to have seven acres due to land grazing permit. But um, my grandpa wants to uh, split up the land, so my mom and her sisters and brother uh, has the, uh, the permit for the land grazing permit. And uh, it's basically really complicated. Anyway, it's a really long process. And I've been doing it ever since I was young. Because uh, my grandpa would always, oh god, he was in the army. Right. And he, uh, he managed to uh, work himself all the way up to $35 an hour, which was a lot of money back then. And uh, I really have the most undying respect for him. And he was the main one that got me into NAIC, Native American Indian Church, and uh, basically believing in the holy people and Mother Earth and all that stuff. And um, basically made me the person I am today. Um, but mainly the cornfield is one thing, because it's been family since the 1920s, all the way up until now. And now that my grandpa's getting old, he can no longer do it himself. So. Uh, two weeks ago, I left on Thursday, and then we worked the whole weekend on uh, harvesting corn and all that stuff. So it's a very, very difficult process. Um, okay, I hope that you all got that uh, um, uh, that touching story uh, down. Um, but um, uh, that is a good goal. It's always uh, good to help out the family. Uh, so, uh, 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 so um, uh, let's see, um, I'm going to put down a personal goal of retirement, and I'm going to make that a 10-year goal. I may be ready to retire in 10 years. Um, okay, I notice I spelled the retirement wrong, so I'll hit the spelling button. And it only checked the uh, cell that I had 10 years in, not the one where I made the spelling error. Uh, okay, hell of a job. Yes, go ahead. All right. Um, now, I may never actually retire. Um, I have a lot of trouble seeing myself sitting watching daytime TV as an exciting activity. So, um, who knows? Maybe I'll be here um, uh, giving your children trouble someday. Um, Um, uh, okay. Um, now, um, what do we do with uh, all of this now? And I recommend when you're setting goals, Choose a time you can be relaxed, you can uh, be, um, uh, you can be sitting, 
drinking uh, Coke uh, uh, on the porch or other beverage with a pad and paper and just write down every, uh, every idea that comes into your head. You know, don't, uh, when, you're, when you're first thinking about goals, don't censor yourself at all. Write down everything, no matter how, uh, 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 how wild and crazy it seems like it would be. Right? Later, we can then start, uh, we can start uh, uh, looking at the goals and revising what uh, uh, what is really a good, realistic, uh, you know, all the smart, measurable, attainable, realistic, timely, uh, smart goals, uh, uh, things that we want to do. All right, so we've got um, uh, so we've got these things down, and uh, I'm hoping that you're putting in a whole lot of things that you have a uh, um, that you have in mind uh, for yourself. Uh, uh oh. Um, uh, Toyota pickup, I spelled Toyota wrong. Um, uh, actually, this is the uh, Toyota T O Y O D A is the family name. They changed it to um, for the uh, uh, brand name. They changed it to T O Y O T A. Um, all right. So I look at these goals and I say, you know what? Um, I uh, I need to make them more specific. So when I say house. Uh, it's got to be um, a 30 minute commute um, and it's got to be about 2,000 square feet. Um, uh, graduate uh, I need to make that more specific with my PhD. Um, girlfriend, hmm, well, what should I be specific about there? Uh, Got to be a book lover, and in fact, I'm going to say book and cat lover. Um, well, I want to be a dean here at NTU. Clean the house in two weeks. Oh, bloody hell. You guys have no idea how big a mess my house is. Um, uh, so I'm just going to put superficially. Yeah, that's a ticket. Uh, retirement, I'm going to put job on there. It really helps me if I have a reason to get up and go somewhere in the morning. You know, my father got a retirement job. Um, 
my father worked 80 hours a week or more his whole life. His retirement job was a 40 hour a week job. All right, and Toyota pickup. Oh gosh, let me think. What year is it? Uh, let's say a 2012. And I'd love to pay three thousand dollars. Is that realistic? Well, we'll find out. All right, so um, I'm actually going to move my timeline over, hoping that I can accommodate. Yeah, there you go. Um, Now, uh, and of course, my actual goals, my actual to-do list would be much longer, but I'm afraid to reveal too much of myself to you for fear you'll make fun of me. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go to the tab that says data here. I'm going to highlight my categories, my goals, and the time, including my header there. And I'm going to go here to sort. OK, and I'm going to press that button. Now, what it does is it allows me to quickly sort my stuff. I do this, uh, I've done this a lot professionally in industry where I sort different kinds of data so that I can find uh, uh, significant uh, aspects of it. Here, I can use it to, uh, first of all, I'm going to click on the my data has headers box. All right, then I'm going to say I'm going to sort by, uh, first I'm going to sort by the time, smallest to largest. Okay, I could sort it the other way, but smallest to largest is the most logical. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click on add a level, and then I'm going to sort by category, uh, and A to Z works uh, just fine there. I can do uh, Z to A, or I could make a uh, custom list um, of, uh, of what I want to do, uh, but uh, A to Z works fine, right? Then when I click OK, it automatically sorts into a timeline of uh, uh, automatically sorts into a timeline from the first to the last. And it, uh, if I had some uh, goals that were conflicting. Uh, uh, as far as they both had the same time, it would then sort them by category as well. All right, so uh, be sure and uh, and save that. Uh, to your flash drive. I'm going to want you to send that to me. I am wondering uh, if I have time to uh, 
uh, uh, to do a lot more on today. Um, but let's go ahead and go to File, Hit New, and a new blank workbook. All right, once again, I'll make it large enough for y'all to see. Right? We always put our header with our names. Uh, our class, in this case, make it homework number six and the date. Uh, what I want to do is start on um, start talking a little bit about uh, charts. Uh, yes, Winter. Uh, I can't see your screen. Oh, sorry. Sorry. What a mistake on my part. All right. So I close out that one. I want to share screen. There we go. Oh, thank dog for that. All right, so I'm going to save this while I'm thinking about it in the computer skills file. And I'm going to save this as homework number six um, uh, charts. And I'm going to put dash one because I don't think there's any way I'm going to finish charts today. All right. When we do charts in our technical field uh, or fields, there are always going to be plenty of reasons to do charts. Um, right? We may be doing um, uh, for example one of the classics is um, is um, sales chart. Okay, we'll start with a, a very simple example. All right, so there we'll have winter, spring, um, oh, wait, no, summer comes before fall. It comes back to me now. Like the hot kiss at the end of a wet fist. Uh, right, so... Uh, Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you've got to do is call, as the old song reminds us. All right, once I have those, I can also just go ahead and pull down, and it'll just duplicate that again, right? Now... I could sit here and make up a lot of numbers, but instead I'm going to go equals R-A-N-D, and you'll notice it gives me two choices of functions. It'll give me a totally random number, or it can be a random, random number between. All right, I want a random number between. So I'm going to highlight that and click on that twice. All right, and all it does is it says, give me a bottom for the range and a top for the range. So I'm going to say the bottom is 100, comma, and the top is going to be 1,000, right parenthesis. All right, and then I'm just going to pull that down 
to be as long as um, uh, as long as my uh, uh, number of seasons here. Uh, all right, now one of the things about using the random number generator on Excel is every time you touch one of these, it's going to change all the numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and copy, and then I'm going to paste, and you'll see on the paste options, the second one says one, two, three, that means values. All it's going to do is paste those same values and it won't change the numbers anymore. Well, it'll change them that time, but I swear that's the last time it changes them. All right. Now, uh, so what am I going to do? I am going to, uh, and I could do all kinds of, of uh, little uh, uh, tricks here. Like I could then highlight this and go ahead and um, insert and shift the cells right. Okay, and it actually gives me two, right? But what I want to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to merge and center and create different years. So I merge and center every winter through fall. Um, How do you uh, shift it right? I, uh, I highlighted both season and sales, the, the whole column. Okay. And then I right clicked and it gives you insert uh, and I, so I click on insert and I shifted the cells right. Okay. Now if I had only highlighted season, it would have uh, only shifted over one column. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now, so here I'm going to go 2020, or wait, no, we don't have fall yet really. Um, right, then I'm going to come up here, I'm going to put 2018, uh, go up one more, 2017, go up one more, 2016. All right. Right, once again, I have these guys, and I'm going to go ahead and massage their um, uh, uh, their presentation by going ahead and doing a um, uh, uh, clicking so that they're in the center in both directions. Uh, I've got them highlighted and I could go ahead and uh, I could go ahead and come up here and say, you know what, I want to increase the angle so that it looks a little snappier, right? So I just hit this button, choose my orientation, angle counterclockwise, um, right? And for that matter, all right, get off of that. For that matter, I could say, you know what, that's really wide. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tighten this up a little, move my column so that it's a bit tighter. And go ahead and write year here. All right, and I'll go ahead and uh, use my borders, make it all borders, but then on the outside I want a thick border. 
Okay, so then I, I've got some stuff. Creating those borders makes it a little easier to read, uh, right? Because sometimes you get a thing where it's uh, winter 463, but you can't tell that 463 is next to winter. It looks more like it should be the 392. Uh, uh, All right. All right. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to go to Insert. And right over here on Insert, we have Charts. All right, and it gives me all kinds of different uh, ideas of what uh, what charts uh, uh, I can have. Right, I could have a bar chart. Right, so I put um, I put a bar chart in. And you'll notice that my bar chart has, it's got nothing on it. So I go inside the chart area, right click, oh, obstreperous, eh? All right. Oh, okay. So I go to, uh, I'm on design, I go to select data. And you can see I've got uh, nothing here. So I go to uh, uh, I go to my entries, and I'm going to call this uh, series name. I'm going to go equal, and I'm going to put equal sales. Oh, wait. I hit uh, return, which I didn't mean to do. So I'm going to go, uh, so I'm still on sales. I'm going to hit edit. All right. So I go down here to series values and I go equals. And then I just highlight all of these. Uh, okay, so easy peasy. You can also just highlight and press the bar graph. It'll fill everything out for you. Highlight and go to the highlight, bar. Highlight, yeah. Highlight the year, season, sales information, and then go to the bar graph that you want, and it'll populate everything for you. Okay. Well. Uh, the horizontal category, uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and, oh, wait, not that one. All right, there we go. Uh, so I highlight all my years and seasons, and you can see as uh, uh, as Victoria said, we'll get a very nice little uh, uh, thing where it tells us, okay, uh, winter, spring, summer, fall for 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. Now, if we were, uh, uh, if this was a real sales chart, we would expect to be able to read something out of this, right? Right now, we're just concerned with creating a chart, not with um, uh, not with having it be something that would be uh, actually useful <laughs> and accurate. Um, uh, all right, so I've got that. Now, one thing I could do, I know that all my numbers are between 100 and 1,000, right? So what I could do is I could come over here to uh, my numbers 
on the y-axis and I could right click and say, you know what, uh, I want to format my axis. And when I do that, I get this little dialog box over here. And um, since I know that my um, uh, that my maximum is a thousand, I'm going to go ahead and change twelve hundred to a thousand. Um, okay, and. Uh, major units, uh, you know what, I uh, think I'll go ahead and change that to 100. Uh, all right, so I hit uh, return. I hit the close box here. Right, so you can see uh, it's changed things in accordance with uh, how I want to show this. Um, all right. Now, while we're thinking about it, let's look at how is this going to display. So I, I hit File, I go to Print, and it's only showing me only showing me the chart, which is not what I want. So I hit, uh, I go back, I hit a random cell, and then I go back and on file and look at print. Well, you know what? That's really kind of boring. Uh, so what I'm going to do is change from port portrait orientation to landscape orientation. That gives me a, a bit more room to fool around with this. Um, all right, so, uh, uh, so there you go. Of course, I'm not going to print, but I am going to go ahead and hit save. Um, as I've said before, now Microsoft only saves it automatically to its OneDrive. Um, the problem with OneDrive is we don't always have reliable internet service or for that matter reliable electricity. So you want to be sure you're saving it to some place you have access to uh, all the time. All right, so we've seen, uh, and how far out is, see, my dotted line that indicates the edge of the page is right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what, I want to go ahead and stretch this out a bit so it fills up the page better. All right, I'm going to come down here then, and I'm going to go to my insert. I'm going to go to the chart, uh, the chart section, and I want to put in a line chart. All right, so, and you'll notice how quickly it just, uh, it assumed that all that data was what I wanted to put in there. So uh, I can just take that and put it down here and say, uh, you know what, okay, I like this, but I want it to be a little bit bigger, fill up more of my page. So this time I go to the corner and I'm making it bigger all the way around. See, there's only a little bit of space here at the bottom. 
I'm going to go and I'm going to reformat. I'm going to reformat my axis again. Again, I want it to be a thousand. This time, I don't mind if it's by two hundreds. Although it changed it to the one hundred that I had um, uh, done on the other one. And if I, if I said, no, I really want 200s, I could just come back here and change major units to 200. Right? And then I click on the close button. And there you go. I've got my, uh, I've got my chart in two different ways of looking at sales. Um, uh, a lot of times when people are talking about sales, they look at this kind of a line chart, not a, uh, not a bar chart uh, uh, like we have here. Um, okay, are there any questions? Okay, I'm calling that no questions. Well, how, how do I put in the line chart again? All right, you go to insert. Okay, insert. You'll notice there's a little button here. Okay. okay. That uh, that has kind of squibbly lines, mm -hmm. uh, and you can press on that, and it'll give you uh, some different ideas of the kind of uh, line charts um, uh, that you can have. All I did was the simplest 2D line chart. Okay. Do you want us to send that homework to you as well? Yes, please. And how did you uh, move it down? How did it, oh, so you'll so notice, you, you see the little uh, four-way arrow, uh -huh. when I have that, if I left click, then I can move it around however I want. Okay. Okay, and now I want to make sure that these charts are lined up. So I made sure the left side here is lined up. Then I come over here to the right side. And I'm going to say, all right, I got to go out the tiniest amount here. Okay, um, when I did that, I lost the, um, the bar graph. Okay, it'll do that if you're still on the bar graph, right? You've got to make sure that you've clicked on a, a, another cell somewhere else. Okay. Right, but you can hit the back okay. arrow to get back to your bar chart. I got it now. What a man. I mean, look guys, this is not rocket science by any means. Um, uh, but, one of the things that we want to be sure of is, as you go through your technical education, you're able to put together a, a graph or a chart so that it makes sense. It looks like um, uh, it, it's something that's interpretable. Um, uh, right? And this, uh, this kind of, uh, these two kinds of charts are pretty easy. Now, there are charts that are not easy. For example, the pie graph. Never use a pie graph unless you, someone has a gun to your head kind of thing. Pie charts are re actually very hard to read. Uh, you know, the, the difference for example, if we had a pie chart 
the difference between spring of 2017 and summer of 2018 would be almost indistinguishable one from the other, right? But you see people all the time that make pie charts. They've got so many slices on the pie chart that they run out of colors and you can only really distinguish between about uh, eight colors uh, on a chart. Uh, that's, that's a human factors thing. Um, so we want to avoid pie charts um, uh, uh, all, the, uh, all the time when we're presenting data. Uh, all right. Well, uh, next time we'll go into some other charts uh, uh, because we use a, a wide variety of charts in the engineering and technical fields. Um, and uh, I'll teach you as many of their little peculiarities as possible. Are there any questions? Okay, uh, as usual, save your work, email it, uh, the files to me, and when the fields are white with daisies, Miss Charlie will return to us. Next week. Okay, thank you very much, Drew. Uh, okay, well, uh, Winter, that's our uh, show for today. Have fun. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, close this. Yes, we're leaving the meeting. Can I copy today's lessons? Uh, well, you can copy it, but I would uh, prefer that you uh, look at the uh, uh, that you look at the video and oh, yeah. follow from that. Yeah, I can do that.